Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back in Chichikanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. I got a customer's almost brand new Echo CS400 chainsaw in this week and they said it will not start when it's hot. So I thought I'd take y'all along with me on this diagnosing and repair because even though I do not know what is wrong with it, I got a good idea. Now, in most of my videos, I am trying to teach something. So usually I know what is wrong with whatever unit I'm working on and then I show you the steps on how to repair it. This one, it's different. I have no clue. Customer brought it in saying that it don't, won't start whenever it gets hot. I did one thing though. I checked the fuel. Now, is there water in it? No. Is it bad? No. Is it fresh? Yes. Now, I guess you could say in the past, I have made a few videos uh, that might have been a little controversial about a engineered fuel sold at the big box stores that everybody uses. And in the past, I have shown many examples of why it sometimes does not like to run correctly in these small engines. But I still get a lot of commenters saying, I've been using it for years and it works fine. And it might. But at the same time, if you are having issues, it might be the reason. We're gonna take it outside, we're gonna check its RPMs, and we're gonna see if it's running at peak performance on this engineered fuel. So I broke out my handy dandy digital tachometer. I've been leaving links to these below my videos forever. A lot of times they like to go up on price and price gouge when these start selling quite heavily. So do not buy them if they are $100. Anytime that I see them for like 70 bucks, I will definitely let you know. Either I post it on Facebook or on YouTube because I don't want you to get ripped off. So we're gonna check the RPMs on this. The top RPMs on a CS400 should be about 12,600. We don't wanna go over that. Let's see where it's at. All right, so this is my very first time starting this chainsaw. I primed it about six, seven times. I've got it turned on and I've got the choke pulled out. I'm gonna give it a few pulls. Let's see what she does. Pops off, starts great. Echoes start so easy. Take it off chunk. Now, I hope that you can hear in the video how boggy that sounded. You might not have, but you can see that the RPMs are not where they're supposed to be. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to change the fuel out. I'm gonna put my mix in and let's see if it makes a difference. Now, when we pour it out, we wanna make sure to prime it, purge, oops, purge all of that stuff out of the fuel lines, out of the primer bulb. Yep, it's that same big box store engineered fuel. I'm putting in my regular 89 with red armor oil and ethanol shield. I leave links to the ethanol shield and the red armor in the description box below if you wanna get your own. All right, so the only thing I have done to this chainsaw is change the fuel out to regular gasoline instead of the pre-engineered fuel. I haven't changed the spark plug. I haven't checked the air filter, nothing. I really don't know if it has any other issues. We're just going to see what a difference different fuel makes. Now, it might take just a second to get to where it needs to be because that pre-engineered fuel is still in the carburetor. But once it flushes that through and gets my fuel in there, let's see what the RPMs are. Had no fuel in the fuel lines. Got some fuel in there now, choking. Pops off.
that is a 13, almost 1400 RPM difference. So what does that tell me? That tells me that this saw is not running at least at peak performance, which I know 11.6, 11.7 is still not peak performance. It can run possibly higher. In fact, most of the units that you buy are set that low to get that extra fuel mixture. That way you don't burn your machine up. In fact, whenever you go to buy a brand new, for example, Echo, they give a 30 day carburetor adjustment warranty. So you need to go home. You need to run the Dickens out of your machine. If you feel like it needs a little boost, take it back to your dealer. They will adjust it for free because they're not adjusted at peak performance when you buy them. So this saw probably normally runs 11.6 to 11.9, something like that. It probably never hits 12,000 to 12.6, like, you know, what it can, the maximum. But it does run at 11, 6, 7, 8, 9 whenever I have my regular gasoline in there, whenever I have that pre-engineered canned big box fuel in there, it's only running at 10.4, 10.5, 10.6. .10 so what that tells me is that if it's not burning the fuel correctly, it is definitely, when they go to shut it off, when they get it hot, it's gonna flood out immediately. So whenever they go to back to start it up, they're gonna go pull it, it's not gonna start. They think, oh, well, maybe it needs some fuel. I'm gonna choke it. That's the wrong thing to do because it's already got too much gas in the cylinder. Then it just makes it worse. And it's definitely just a flood issue. You're not going to have these issues if your machine is running at peak performance with the correct mixture. Now, a lot of people are gonna get in the comment section and they're gonna say it runs just fine. Yes, that saw would have still cut wood at 10.8, 10.7. But the fact is, it could run better. I've had a lot of people ask me about the Aspen 2. I had never used it before until a viewer sent it to me and thankfully they did because this is really good stuff. This is not what I'm talking about here. I, uh, they sent me the Aspen 2 and the Aspen 4. I've used it in a ton of stuff. I've had no issues and everything has run at full potential when I've used it. If I can find any, I'll leave it in the description box below so you can get some because this is pretty good and it's ethanol free. Now I go through way too much gasoline to just buy the expensive stuff, although it is nice to have around. I do use regular 89 octane with the red armor oil. This is the best oil I feel that you can buy. I leave it in the description box below all of my videos in case you wanna get your own. I mix it with ethanol shield, a little splash of that. It's a fuel stabilizer that eats water and rejuvenates all the rubber components of your of your machine like your diaphragms and your carburetor and your fuel lines and primer bulb and stuff like that so that's the way I mix and it seems to work for me I let my stuff sometimes sit for a year because I have so much equipment that it just doesn't get used that often and it's always worked so guys, this is just your little reminder. If you do use that big box store canned fuel, a lot of times when customers would bring their machines into the shop and that's all it was, it wouldn't start or it was running poorly because of the canned fuel that was in it. All I had to do was change that out and put fresh fuel in it and it was good to go. It actually is really good to store your units because everything stays pliable. It, it's, it, I don't, I'm not gonna knock it that way because it actually is good for something that you're gonna let sit. But when it comes to running, I'm telling you, I don't know if it's just bad, bad batches or per certain parts of the world where we get bad batches or what, but I've seen it a ton of times. Now, I'm not going to leave you hanging. We're going to make sure that this machine has no other issues. We're going to go ahead and check inside the cylinder and piston, make sure that everything looks pretty in there, check the plug, check the air filter, make sure that those weren't the issues that the customer was having. But I'm pretty sure since I've ran into it hundreds of times before that it was definitely a fuel issue. I've got my HD endoscope or boroscope. I know you guys hate me calling it endoscope, but the company actually calls it an endoscope. So <laughs> I know all my viewers over 50, they're like, don't call it an endoscope. That, that gives me the heebie-jeebies, but it's just what the company calls it. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and get this plug out. Oh, that plug boot's tight. Plug looks good. Flashlight here. And the piston couldn't look any more beautiful. Let me show you. Get my. It's so pretty in there. You can still see all the cross thatching. No, absolutely no up and down scoring. It still looks beautiful. And the air filter is pretty much clean as a whistle. Like I said before, this saw looks almost brand new. It's barely been used. So guys, if you don't know which uh, canned fuel I am talking about, it's 
the most common one sold at the big box stores. If, if the first one to come to your mind is probably it. If you do not know what I am talking about, you could look back at past videos. I've uh, said a lot about it already, so I don't want to say their name anymore, just in case, you know, I don't want to seize and desist kind of letter. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if you are having issues and you do use that kind of fuel, definitely change your fuel out and see if that is your issue first. Don't take it to the repair shop for them to charge you 20 something dollars just to put some fresh fuel in there. So now that I'm done with my little fuel rant there, I wanted to talk with y'all about something else. And this is completely off topic. So if you're only here for repair stuff, you might want to click away. But if you're here about supporting the channel, please keep listening. I started Chicanics Mechanics membership a few months ago. And first off, I want to thank everybody who became a Chicanic Mechanic. I thank you all so much for your support. But I did have a lot of viewers who think that they're missing out on something for not paying for this service. And I do not want you to feel that way. I promise you that I have and I'm going to continue bringing you the same one to two videos every single week, saving you time, money, and frustration on all your outdoor power equipment, repairs, and service with my tips and tricks. So if I'm doing that, what's the point of being a member, right? Well, it does come with some perks. First off, you get a highlighted little icon next to your name. So every time you comment on one of my videos, I see it. I either like your comment or I respond back to you. Now, this does not mean that I'm not going to read your comment if you're not a member, because usually I go through all the comments every single day to make sure there's not scammers. I also usually put out an extra video every single week for my members. Now, it might only be a couple minutes long. It might be 20 minutes long. It just depends. Sometimes you'll find me in my robe next to the pool. Sometimes you'll find me looking skanky with no makeup on. It's unedited with no commercials. And usually it's like an afterthought to a video that I had put out that morning or information that I realized I should have put in the video that I didn't. So what I'm really saying is that although I am extremely thankful for everybody that's become a member, it doesn't matter if you pay for for a service or not. If you watch my videos, you rock, period. Okay. <laughs> I thank you so much for being here. We just th hit 387,000 subscribers. I, I wouldn't be here, wouldn't be doing this without each and every single one of you. Thank you all so much. So guys, thanks again for tuning into Chicanic. If you find yourself coming back to my videos over and over again, think about hitting that subscribe button. It helps out the algorithm to make my videos shown to more people to save them time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found me at Facebook, find me at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Find me on Instagram at the Real Chicanic, or find me at Chicanic.com where you can get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks guys, and have a great day.